Hey guys, Ed here, and I've been getting a lot of questions lately about the shelves behind me. Uh, most of you probably watched an early video of mine where I sort of went over this a little bit, but I made some modifications to it that you would need to make in order to put the Super Nintendo or the Atari 2600 games, or any other games for that matter. So I'm going to kind of show you those. It's a real simple modification, but it does add some expense to it, so instead of $15, it would be like $20 to hold all these games. Uh, and I'm going to build some new stuff. The new stuff that I built, I honestly did just for this video. And you're going to see, I'm going to basically walk you through putting the stuff together. Um, all you're really going to need are a couple of drill bits and a cordless drill. Uh, as far as the cutting, all the cutting can be done at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever before you bring it home. In most cases, the associates will cut it for you as long as you have the dimensions ahead of time. And if not... Most home improvement stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, wherever you happen to be going, will have a cart in the molding aisle with a saw on it where you can cut it yourself. Uh, just walk over there, borrow a tape measure off one of the associates, measure it out, cut it, you're good to go. So you won't even need a saw as long as you get the wood someplace that has a saw that can cut it for you or that you can use to cut it yourself. So here you go. I apologize. The video seems rushed because, well, it was. I was trying to get it done in a hurry. Okay, so I use a couple different kinds of shelving. Uh, I use these black shelving units here that I bought from Walmart. Uh, I think they run for like $27 right now. You can also buy something very similar at Target and it runs I think $29 at Target. Now I've seen some other people use these. I know the Frugal Gamer uses these. 8-Bit uh, Eric, the messy video game use, nerd, uses these. Uh, Captain 8-Bit uses these. I think I've seen him in Shady Jay's house. Uh, Man, just a whole bunch of people use these. And they work pretty good for holding systems. Now, they do not work very good for holding uh, video games, which is why I built these here on the cheap. And basically, I built those absolutely as cheaply as I could. It was sort of an exercise to see how cheaply I could build shelves to hold as many games as possible. And if you've seen my video regarding these shelves, it took me uh, about $15.50 and then I made one minor adjustment, which is to put some Luon, which I had in my garage, uh, on the shelves for the loose uh, Super Nintendo and Atari 2600 cartridges. Now, I did that because of the way I built these. I built these out of 2x4s and 1x2s, which of course, that brings the 1x2s out too far to hold these loose carts. And when I was in the store, I really considered buying two different things. I thought about doing it this way, and then I thought about doing it with 2x3s and 1x2s, which is what I'm going to show you in a second. Anyway, I decided to go this route, and when I got home, duh, I realized that these aren't going to sit on there very well, at least not with the labels facing out. So what I did here is I cut Luan to run the entire length of this section, and all I did was use some wood glue and some staples. You can see the staples there to hold it in place, and it works Great. All right, so first off, you're going to need a cordless drill or a corded drill. Either way, doesn't really matter, but you will need a drill. You might be able to do it without a drill, but it would be a lot more difficult. Next thing you could use is something like this here. And what this does is it's got a Phillips bit on one side, and then if you flip it over, oops, well, mine's busted. Uh, I didn't realize that. It would have a drill bit in here normally that protrudes, and basically what you do is you drill the pilot hole, and you drill a countersinking hole for the screw in one shot. But assuming that most people don't have those, or don't know about them, what I'm going to use is a small drill bit for the pilot hole and a large drill bit to countersink the screw. Now the purpose for countersinking the screw in this instance is because I'm using 2x3's and I've only got 4 inch screws and I want to make sure I get as much bite into the wood that will be holding it as possible. So here we go. All you really do is see here if I can get it. And this is not to be perfect because I'm not going to keep these shelves, but it'll give you the idea. Drill your pilot hole. Oops. 
First of all, I need a little bit more bit. Sorry about that. Switch the speed up. Drill your pilot hole. Now, if I was making this a permanent shelf, I would be taking a lot more time, but I'm not. So, I'm. Dang it! I'm not. All right, drill a pilot hole in this one. Drill the pilot hole, I'm gonna drill the countersink hole, stuck the bigger bit in here. This will allow the head of the screw to fit inside. Woo! And that's the end of that battery. There you go, you get the idea. On to the next step. Okay, first of all, just ignore that wire there. I have to reroute a networking wire for my computer. Uh, right now it's just dangling so I can get these in there. But, you can hang these a couple of different ways. Now, since I'm going to be attaching them to this piece here, what I'm going to do is use some 4-inch screws that I had. Just kind of hanging out. Now, you can pick these up at a hardware store, of course, but I just had them sitting here. And again, normally I would not consider putting these up there with that much weight on it, just with two screws holding it, but just for instructional purposes. Now, if you were going to hang these on drywall, you would use the same technique I showed you. You would, you know, drill a pilot hole and then drill a hole to countersink the bolt a little bit. And you would use something like this, which is called a toggle screw, or a toggle bolt, rather. Uh, they come much longer, they come heavier duty, all this other stuff. If, for you guys that aren't familiar with this, basically you pre-drill a hole in your drywall or even your plaster if you were going to do it in plaster. And the purpose of these is when you can't hit a stud, you use these. You pre-drill your hole, you put this screw through the wood or whatever it is that you plan to attach, and then once it's through, you screw this little wing nut looking thing onto it and what happens is you have your hole in the drywall this thing pushes through the hole and then grabs onto the back and you tighten it down and as you tighten it this thing will press against the back side as you can see there and it will hold it in place and it holds a surprising amount of weight so I have used these things to hold just ridiculous amounts of weight and they work so Depending on how you're going to build these, if you're going to hang them like I am, these will still be okay. You'll be surprised by how much weight these will hold. Now, you may need to use a few of them, but perfectly reasonable for this type of application. Again, though, I'm using big-ass screws. Now, hopefully I don't kill myself, but I couldn't get my ladder down here. Well, I couldn't get my ladder at all because my brother has it, borrowed it, and hasn't brought it back for almost a year now. So I'm going to be standing on my computer chair. If you see me crash and fall... That's why. Oh, also, I didn't uh, charge my other drill battery, so we've resorted to the corded drill here. So, let's see if I can do this without killing myself. I have already pre-marked the spots up there that I'm going to attach this to sort of speed things along. And I'm going to untuck my shirt so that you don't see how fat I am. And here we go. Let's see if I can do this without killing myself on the chair. Screw in there. Got my pre marked spot. For those of you at home, I do not recommend doing this on a chair that swivels. Or any chair for that matter. Find a ladder. Good enough. Alright, next. You know, it might be easier for me to do this standing on the ground. But I'm not that smart. Alright. Take two. leverage. There is that step. And, surprisingly, I'm not yet dead. Alright, next step. Okay, 
I guess I could have turned the camera before so you could see better. Too late now. To speed this along a little bit, I've already pre-drilled some pilot holes here. And I've already pre-marked my boards. So, hopefully, I'll just be able to screw these in real quick. With my head in the way so you can't see. Now, you'll notice these are swinging loose on the bottom, but that's not really going to make a big difference. For what I'm using them for, which is essentially just to do this video. Please bear in mind that this is extremely quick and extremely dirty. And it is essentially just to give you an idea of what to do here. Feel free to modify this or do it more safely or just not look like a moron while you're doing it like I do. Of course, if you're not making a video at the time, it doesn't really matter if you look like a moron because nobody's going to see it. Now, essentially, I've just set these all to be drilled in at about nine inches apart. And the last one is going to be tough because it's up high and I'm not going to be able to get any leverage on this. Let's see if I can do it anyway. So there you go. That's how you put it together. You see, it doesn't take very long. All right, so here we go. On two by threes and two by twos, you can store CD size games and CD cases. I've got some Master System and Genesis games on here and they fit very nice. Actually, they fit better on this than they do on my two by fours and one by twos. Uh, let's see, some boxed Nintendo cards, Super Nintendo cards, N64, a couple of Atari cards, uh, some PlayStation 2 titles sit in there very nice. And what this really helps out with is the cartridges. Uh, the Nintendo cartridges sit nicer on here than they do on the other one. Um, the Super Nintendo cards will actually fit on this, where if you remember down here, I had to use the, uh, the Luan to set them on. Those fit on there, just barely, but, I mean, they do fit. And same thing with the Atari 2600 cards. The Atari 2600 cards will fit on here. Now, these are 7800 cards, but they will fit. This is something, actually, that Old School Brian has used. Uh, I talked to him about it afterwards and noticed in one of his videos that he had these, and this is exactly what he used. 2x3s and 1x... I'm sorry, 2x3s and 2x2s. Now we should probably harass old school Brian because I'm sure he's a wealth of knowledge on this type of shelving and he's just been hoarding all his knowledge to himself and I don't think that's fair. Now I'm going to show you one other option here and I'm going to have to cut. Alright now, finally if you use 2x2's and 2x2's you can store loose carts. This will work well for Atari 2600 uh, ColecoVision, all those kind of carts. It works much better for Super Nintendo carts. It will work for Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, uh, EA Sports Sega Genesis carts. And as you can see here, they fit nicely. They go back into position. Sorry, I guess it would help if I was aiming at it. As you can see here, they fit nicely. They go back into position okay. You can take one or two out, and all they'll do is fall over. Oops, I said fall over. And, oops, it's hard to get them back in here one-handed. Pain in the ass. There we go. So, I'm about to run out of time on this camera. There we go. Much better. So anyway, like I was saying, uh, the loose carts fit much better on 2x2s and 2x2s. Now, I don't necessarily know that I would use this kind of shelving for this. What I actually like are these here. And what these are, audio cassette tape holders. And they work really well for Sega Genesis, Sega Master System, and 32X games. They slide in and out real nice. Oops. If you're not a dummy, they slide in and out real nice. Now, I suppose you could use those in conjunction with these, because it seems like it works really well. But, there you go. Uh, 
Frugal Gamer. I don't know that I could do it much faster. I only had about 45 minutes to shoot this video. I really hope this helps. Thanks for watching.